site outside of El Tambo. The, up here, we're on the top of the mountain or hill, if you will. It apparently was the high temple. It was the center of wall worship and political and administrative center and an astronomy observation consecrated to the sun and other cosmic phenomena. This is a cistern. No way to tell except that these blocks uh, theoretically were used then to hold posts. See the holes in the top? So that it protected the wood from rotting out, although I don't know how it did that unless they put pitch or something around the posts to keep water from getting into the hole where it would do exactly the opposite of what they wanted. Might have been a curry concha. All around us is the hint of elevations, like a wall right in through there. Very curious structure. Interestingly enough, it harkens back to Roman baths, where they used at least square pillars like that one down there, shorter ones, um, to create a floor of about 18 inches off the grade in which steam or hot water could be run through for the sauna type effect. But here we can see that this is open down below, arched for some reason, and an opening over there. So maybe we'll find more information somewhere. Beside it's still another similar structure. It'd be interesting to know what these are but I don't see any decent explanation. To myself, the discussion on Curry Concha uh, relates to those two things we just saw, those two well-like structures. So I disregard that. That is, and it doesn't have a number to define what its purpose was. If we look at this again as an oven, it kind of makes some sense. You could throw wood down in that lower portion, somehow have a tunnel that provides air from below and then it rises up and through some kind of surfacing here whether it was sheets of thin rock or whatever you were able to bake something those are pretty profoundly large ovens largest I've ever seen and there were two of them but then again if bread is a super main staple of the population maybe two wide entrance ways into the uh, lower level of these ovens and an irrigation or water canal alongside the hill. Walk down here just to look at the botanical garden since I'm here. Uh, but you can see this was terraced and maybe there were several more terraces they haven't bothered to reconstruct. And there were more terraces going down. So all of this would have been planted, I'm sure. Why would you not? So the constructor of such walls would have considered those big rocks as anchor rocks, base rocks. If this is Inca or not, but you can certainly see that there's been a very decent effort to put rocks in place that conform to the shapes of nearby rocks. It would appear logical that given this raised bridge area, if you will, with stone walls on either side to uh, support the structure, and then this obvious drainage area out through here, uh, would suggest that there was a pond of some sort here at that time. It's interesting to imagine what they might have used or conceived the purpose of this or the significance of this location to be that they purposely uh, made an alcove out of their wall. And build and forget means that we don't replace signs that are almost unreadable. Quack, 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 quack. This is a pretty water feature, particularly if this is the way it once was. You may see a red fish down there right at the bottom of this pond. Almost Japanese-like in its ambiance. It gives you an idea of the importance of this site, how um, functional and impressive it must have been based on the walls we see 
its height, the full size of those structures where we're able to see them on top. The little walkway, which is pretty. One can imagine having a home and having a designer lay it all out like this. Pretty water feature made from probably volcanic rock. And Avery, although it looks like it has serpents in it also. Very pretty enclosures, but I don't see anything. <laughs> of course, the parrot hang out. Typical husband and wife, the bigger ones, the hawks. Hopefully this is an injured animal reserve also, but I don't know. Sister's English here. <laughs> Aware compared to his picture. And a hawk. Large birds, aren't they? And of course, the extravagant ones. Plant we haven't seen before. Today, perhaps people who were not living in the compound approached across this causeway they would have seen a more vibrant hillside perhaps a taller set of walls you just notice off to the to the right a, a yama unless it's just a statue now this this is a very large and this compared to most of what we've seen in the way of an aqueduct. It's an interesting structure. I'm guessing it was a bath of some sort. Notice how you could walk from the larger section in the middle to these two outer rooms. But also notice that there are a set of ringed uh, areas, whether they were little terraces or not I don't know I'm standing on top of one now this one here and then there's another one there and another one there this is a model of what this area would have looked like this is that temple that we were up on top of with the holy rock in the center of that um, strut and wall, little walled structure between the two buildings and the pathway that we walked down and then around this little log wall. This is the long irrigation ditch that we've just followed. And here is that little spot we're in front of right now. Notice this feature right here. I don't know what it is. It may have been for collecting water. Notice there's a doorway there that says a tunnel leading to something. And that may have been some kind of an aquifer or a tank, water tank. And notice this white rock here. I think I can point those out to you in a moment. So, right beneath that bench you can see the tunnel and it looks like to the left of the tunnel in our footage is white stone. Now, what it would have represented as a symbol, I don't know. This may give us a hint of what the crops were that they grew in those days. Melons down below, squash and corn. Don't know what this red crop here is. And like these were just ornamental plants. Perhaps this area alongside this walkway back towards the fortress area was always here and maintained pretty much in the way you see it now. You have to guess. Is that one huge yucca plant? Can you imagine what its stalk would look like if fully grown? It 
assume these are a recent design. Small herd of lawnmowers. Sweet Papa. This may be that holy rock that was depicted in one of those drawings or uh, three-dimensional models up in the temple space. It was some kind of an unnamed, not quite circular, but rounded at the back enclosure. Entrance to the tunnel with a somewhat Inca-like opening. Yeah, so my bed is it acted as a cistern. Yeah, and this faint remnant of an interpretive sign gives us a hint of, of the elevations of that. So it'll probably be a superb cistern. Although the interpretive sign says a possible dwelling place of mummies, wakas, for their worship and veneration. They were exhibited in the principal Inca religious celebrations. For a symbolic purpose, they represented the Uka Pacha of the underworld that made contact with the Ke Pacha of the earthly world. Well, why didn't they use it as a cistern? Probably because seeing it in the model, you would think that it was open down like this, but it wasn't. Our nicely fitted stones, just not the superb fitted stones of the later eras of Inca stonework. It's interesting to notice the variances in elevation of these terraces. Neither were the terraces flat nor were the walls horizontal as an elevation. This is a reconstruction of what these buildings would have looked like here apparently. Uh, stone walls and a thatched roof. They were pretty substantial weren't they? 